You can buy speakers for $500, $5,000, or even $50,000. They all make sound, they all have drivers, and they all have enclosures. So where does all that extra money actually go? Today we're going deep on what actually makes a speaker high-end. And it might not be what you think. It's not always about fancy finishes or brand names, even though that does come to play. This one's gonna be more about physics, materials, design decisions that most people never see. And fair warning, once you understand this, you won't be able to unhear or unsee the differences. Welcome to Timber West Design, where creative ideas are built to bring beauty and purpose to your space. Hi, I'm Steve, and on this video, I'm exploring speaker design through materials and construction, especially where cabinet choices matter. Let's start with the component almost nobody talks about, but affects everything you hear, the cabinet. Your speaker cabinet isn't just a box holding drivers. When a driver moves, it sends sound forward into the room, and that's what you want to hear. But it also sends energy back into the cabinet. That energy hits the cabinet walls, and if those walls vibrate even slightly, they create their own sound. Sound that wasn't in the original recording. And that is called cabinet resonance. Think about trying to have a conversation while somebody taps on a table. That tapping adds noise to the conversation. Cabinet resonance does the same thing to your music. It adds coloration and obscures detail. Every material resonates. The real question is how much and where? This is one of the most overlooked limitations in speaker design. A high-end speaker isn't just using expensive materials to look fancy, it's using materials chosen to minimize this problem. Most speakers are made from MDF, including many excellent ones. MDF is practical, it's consistent, it's easy to machine, and affordable at scale. That's why it's used everywhere and why many great speakers are made from it. But MDF has constraints. It's compressed wood fiber and glue, and there are physical limits on how inert you can make it. High-end manufacturers work around this with thicker panels, heavy bracing, and laminated layers. And all that helps, but it adds cost, complexity, and weight. You're managing the material's limitations rather than eliminating them. And that's why boutique builders started looking elsewhere. Some builders turn to denser hardwoods, others use composites, aluminum, slate, or engineered stone. Each approach is trying to solve the same problem. How do you build a cabinet that doesn't add its own voice to the music? The trade-off is cost and complexity. These materials are often harder to source, harder to work with, and usually mean smaller production runs. Which brings us to concrete, a material that's been around forever, but still not very common in high-end speakers. I want to thank this week's sponsor, Pale Blue Batteries. What I like about them is I can take a power bank on the go. There's a USB-C port right on the battery. I can plug it in, charge on the go. Pale blue batteries, they're awesome. From a builder's perspective, concrete is fascinating. And here's what drew me to it. Density. Concrete is several times denser than MDF. And what the physics suggests is that more mass means more inertia and less unwanted movement. So the next thing is rigidity. Cured concrete is extremely stiff. When you knock on it, there's no hollow ring. The material just doesn't want to vibrate. The next is internal dampening. Concrete is a composite, aggregate held in a cement matrix that the structure helps absorb energy instead of ringing. And next is construction. With concrete, the goal is forming a single continuous structure. Fewer joints means fewer places to vibrate to start with. Concrete isn't perfect, it's heavy, it requires different fabrication techniques, it takes time to cure, but the material properties align with what builders are trying to achieve. When I sent my concrete Encore design to GR Research for third-party testing, nothing in their measurements contradicted what the material science would suggest. The cabinet was doing its job, staying out of the way of the drivers. There's one more part of high-end speakers people often overlook. That's precision. Small variations matter. Cabinet thickness, driver alignment, internal volume, High-end builders focus on verified cabinet dimensions, flat, square, driver mounting, calculated and measured internal volume, matched crossover components, and just pair-to-pair -pair consistency. That is why small batch speakers cost more. You're not paying for slower production, 
you're paying for attention to detail that's just difficult to scale. So what makes a speaker high-end? It's minimizing cabinet resonance, choosing materials that support that goal, and maintaining precision throughout the build. Every material is a trade-off. MDF works well within its limits. Alternative materials offer improvements at a higher cost. And the reason I work with concrete is simple. High mass, high rigidity, natural dampening, and continuous construction. Those properties work in favor of the goal. But regardless of the material, truly high-end speakers disappear. They don't add character. They reveal what's already in the recording. If you've noticed differences between budget and high-end speakers, I'd love to hear your experience. Thanks for watching. More builds and testing coming soon.